Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alison, the online piano and the online violin tutor. So this is another violin video review and this is part of the three violins that I will be reviewing from the Fiddler Man collection, which is the Holstein traditional Holstein workshop and the Holstein bench violin. I'm going to be doing individual reviews on all three of those violins as well as two comparison videos. So I'll be comparing the traditional to the workshop and the workshop to the bench and those videos are all going to be linked directly underneath this video so you can listen to them all and compare them and in the same style as I did with the other set of videos that I did around about a year ago when I reviewed um, uh, the, a, a larger collection of the Fiddle and Man violins, I put them all together back to back so you can hear what they sound like. So I will be doing something similar with these three that I've got. So we're going to be kicking off these video reviews with the Holstein traditional Canon violin. And this violin comes in at number three out of the three that I'm going to be reviewing from the traditional, the workshop and the bench. This violin is priced at $1,400 and it does come in other variations too, which I'll have coming up on the screen now. But this is the Canon or the Canone, um, however you want to choose to pronounce that. There are a few other variations as well, but essentially this is the Holstein traditional violin and they're all going to be pretty much the, the, the same. They're just going to have slightly different sounds to them or sounds in tone. So for example, this in my opinion is quite mellow, um, quite dark and quite, quite rich and all of those kind of things. Whereas some of the others might be a little bit brighter, might be a bit sweet might not be quite so mellow, quite so dark, quite so velvety, that kind of thing. So it's definitely worth checking out the other variations within the Holstein traditional um, kind of set, if you like. But this one is one of their most popular ones, which is why I've been sent this one. And this is quite mellow and quite deep and dark, as you will hear in the performance. So this comes playable out the box pretty much. So the uh, first thing I need to mention is that because of the type of violin this is and the price point of this violin is sitting at, it does not come with a bow and it does not come with a case and all that jazz like the other Fiddler Man violins did that I reviewed last year. They were more sets. So you buy them with the violin, the box and the case. These are uh, these are professional or kind of semi-professional to professional violins and these just come as violins. So the bow I'm going to be using to do the demonstration on is my regular bow that, that I use. Just This is a Pernambuco bow. Um, I love it. So I'm going to be using this. Um, I've got blue Mongolian horsehair, for example, on this. So this is just my, my regular bow that I'm going to be playing with. You would want to upgrade you would definitely want to upgrade your bow you want to be spending at least at least five hundred dollars on a bow and I know that's where it starts to get expensive but there really is no point having a violin to end all violins and then you're playing on a bow that you know can't even do basic staccato bowing or spiccato bowing or anything like that so you want a bow that's gonna match up to the quality of the violin, so both can, can, can go hand in hand together. You will have seen some technical specifications of this violin coming up on the screen, but if you wanna know a bit more about this, this violin and go into more detail, then head over to the, the Fiddler Man website. It's a very comprehensive website and they've got a lot more detail about this violin on there and I will put those links in the description bar underneath this video. Okay then, so for demonstration time, what I'm going to do with the other violins is play two pieces that I'm going to record professionally using my studio microphone and on my studio uh, program software. And I'm not going to be doing anything fancy with the sound at all. I'm not going to be adding any EQ, any compression or anything like that. Just the raw sound that you're going to be getting from the violin and that's all you're going to be getting. Also, I'll be doing one recording using the microphone that I've got in the room as well, just for a little bit of comparison, so you can hear more of an ambient recording. I'll also be putting up a video montage side by side, separately of all three of the violins, as I mentioned earlier, just so you can have a little bit more of a comparison and see where each of them are sitting in the line and comparing that to the price point and seeing kind of the differences that you're getting between each violin and each kind of price point.
Okay, moving on to looks, how it sounds, how, how it plays, how it feels, and all that kind of good stuff. So this one, again, looks really nice. In fact, you know, I, I sound like a bit of a broken record. They all look really nice, but for the kind of the, the price point we're going at, which is well over a $1,000 and, and plus, you would expect they were gonna look really nice. These are replica violins, so they are replicas of old traditional violins that, that have been around for, for centuries by very well-known and popular makers. So these are replicas of that. That, that is the whole point, um, you know, and, and lots of people do, do replicas and that's fine. That's the whole point of them. But this one looks really nice. So I want to mention the varnish on this. This it, it, All of these are actually oil hand-painted varnish, but all three of them are slightly different. So you'll see more when I do the comparison videos, which will be linked underneath this one. But, so I'd say this is kind of a satin, uh, not quite fully varnished, but I don't know if you can see that from the kind of reflections on here. So more of a satin look. It has a one-piece back. As you can see, as I've said in the other videos, really it makes no difference whether you've got a one or a two piece back, but I know that doesn't bother you a lot of uh, a lot of you out there, but I don't know why because it doesn't really make any difference. I guess personal preference, if you want a one or a two piece back, mine's got a two piece back, doesn't really bother me. I still like the sound, I still like the way it plays, all that kind of thing. So whether it affects the sound or not, the jury is still out. Nobody has any conclusive evidence or that of that, but this does have a one piece back, as you can see. It just comes with your ebony accessories. You've got uh, an, an ebony chin rest, an ebony tailpiece, and you've got ebony pegs up here. The other ones do come with boxwood, just a personal preference. This comes with ebony. I always like ebony. I always prefer ebony over to boxwood. That's just my personal opinion. Doesn't make a blind bit of difference in sound or tone or playability. It's just purely for the aesthetics. The bridge is very nice. It's a superior uh, Despial bridge and the bridge looks lovely. It looks very, very thin. I do like a thin bridge. Sometimes when you have the bridges that are too thin, they can warp a little bit, but you can just move them and just tweak them a little bit. But I do like a thin bridge, those really thick, fat kind of clumpy bridges are just no good because they really do just muffle and stifle the sound. So the bridge on this is, is really nice. I, I like the bridge. And everything about it just looks really nice and it feels really nice. Tuning, uh, very important to say, uh, very, very easy to tune. These pegs are just slipping around perfectly. Not too much, not too little. Uh, yeah, the, the tuning of this is, is very, very good. And in conclusion, who do I think this is for? I think this is for someone who wants to step into the more semi-professional arena. Um, probably not, not, not gonna be for a beginner. I mean, there's nothing to say that a beginner can't have this if you've got the money to pay for it. Absolutely, why not? The better the violin, the quicker, the better, the more efficiently, you know, the faster you're gonna learn. But certainly, absolutely not necessary to spend over $2,000 on a violin as a beginner. But this would be for someone who has the money to spend on the violin and someone who wants to take the violin a little bit more seriously. I'm not saying you want to take it on as a professional career, um, but I know for you guys out there watching my videos and the kind of audience that I have watching my videos, you know, this is for this is for you. This is for someone who just wants to upgrade to something a lot better. Someone who wants to buy a violin and just die with this one single violin and this will take you right to the end. This will be the end of all violins. You won't have to be buying any more because this is this is a really, really lovely violin. I don't really need to talk about the playability because obviously that's already going to be there. It already feels really nice. It's weighted nice. It's all, you know, it's, it's cut, measured, made, put together really, really nicely. So your money is going into the workmanship, but most of the money is going into the sound and the tone. And that's what you're paying for in these higher end violins. You're paying for the uniqueness, the sound. The, the tone, what, what kind of sound, what kind of tone. You're paying for the choice as well. So you're not gonna get a choice of how mellow, um, how rich, how bright, how sweet, how dark. You're not gonna get that when you're looking at under $1,000 or maybe even under $1,500 really. When you're spending over the $1,500 mark, then 
you know, then it's 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 buyer's choice. You can start to to think about what you want, and you know, if you want a rich, dark, deep, mellow violin, this is going to be the one. You know, this you you have that luxury of being able to choose that because that's what you're paying for, because it's all in the wood. So there we go. I hope you have enjoyed this review and I hope it's helped you to make a decision. Don't forget to check out the other videos and the one where I'm gonna be playing all of these back to back so you can hear the difference in sound and tone and you know where your money is going to be going for the different price points and things and all of those videos are going to be linked directly under this one so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye